Hello again. In this video I will be demonstrating some alarm functions. We will create an event log, create an alarm bar, create an alarm display, create an event display, back up our alarm log, and last but not least, push notifications using Easy Access 2.0. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and open an instance of Easy Builder Pro. And we're going to create a new project. Uh, going to use my personal favorite, the CMT3090. And uh, for this example, there's no need to add a driver, so we'll just click OK. First thing we want to do is go to the Objects tab and down to Alarms. And we need to first of all create uh, an event log. So here's where we uh, actually define our alarms. We're going to start by clicking New. And we can decide whether we want this to be a, a bit or a word based alarm. So the first one we're going to do here, we're going to use a bit. And I'm going to use an internal bit and we use LB100. And uh, trigger condition is on. We could select uh, either on or when it transitions from off to on or when it transitions from on to off. Uh, so we'll, we'll just go ahead and do on for right now. Uh, you can enable a notification uh, so that uh, when this uh, event uh, is, is active we can set a condition of this bit. So I could say maybe bit 110 uh, would be set on when the trigger condition is on and then uh, I'm gonna check this box here so it it will turn back off when the uh, alarm condition rectifies itself. Uh, we've got different categories so we can group our alarms by category so we're going to make this group zero. Uh, under the, uh, we can set the priority level of the alarm. Low, normal, high, emergency. Uh, we can set a delay uh, between when the, uh, when the uh, alarm condition occurs and we actually uh, log the event. So maybe you need a little time for your PLC to start up and to realize alarm conditions and stuff like that. Or, uh, you know, a million different uh, reasons you might want to use that. We can uh, push notifications through our Easy Access 2.0 server. Now, if you're familiar with Easy Access 2.0, and you are a, a 2.0 user uh, and your system is online, uh, you will receive push notifications on your smart device or on your desktop uh, application. And we'll go into a little bit more about uh, some cool things you can do with this. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and check that box. And uh, under the message tab, we can actually define the, uh, the message uh, that is displayed when the alarm condition occurs. So I'll just call this uh, bit alarm one on. Uh, you can do a, uh, we, we have a multi watch function that you can use. And what this is, we can monitor other addresses simultaneously and actually put a value 
in the in our message. So let's say if we added one uh, watch location, go into our settings, and I'm going to uh, monitor a local uh, word address. We'll look at word 100. Click OK. Uh, now we've got a little little uh, pop up here that will explain the syntax. So uh, this is kind of self-explanatory. Uh, uh, display the sign uh, decimal integer. We would use this uh, syntax here, and you just actually add in the watch number here. So I'll copy this. Paste it in here. I will add a one right here. And uh, I'm going to replace this asterisk with a one, and that just means that the decimal point will be one spot over. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, click OK and exit. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, and add a a toggle switch here so we can uh, activate our alarm. And I'm going to add a numeric input object here so I can put a value on our watch address. Now at this point we want to go ahead and uh, display our alarm. So I'm going to go to our alarm tab and uh, we're going to start out with a uh, with an alarm bar. Now uh, this is just a uh, an alarm bar it's scrolling text uh, and of course we can uh, we can select which categories we want displayed in this particular alarm bar. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just display all of them, but we could do 0 to 5 or 10 and so on and so forth. And actually have multiples uh, that would display uh, you know, different categories of alarms. Uh, here we can do a, a transparency, so it's just uh, transparent. We can do our change our frame. Uh, and our and our background color here if we like make it whatever we want and uh, down here we can uh, sort our alarms uh, of course whether they're ascending or descending uh, we can we can display uh, either the date or not the time or the message. Uh, we can change the order that these things display in. We can put the uh, message and then the time and date, or you could put, you know, the uh, date before the time, or whatever you want to do there. Uh, we can go ahead and define the uh, date and time formats that are displayed. And uh, of course, we've got uh, our shape tab. We can change our different styles, and uh, and we can adjust our font size here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, and click OK and place this bar up here. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, do an do an. Uh, offline simulation see what we got so I'm going to flip our switch and trigger our alarm condition and you can see we're displaying 0.0, .0 here I'll turn that off and put a value in here say And 
and of course you see we display that value. That's really handy. You could have a high temperature alarm and you wanted to show a temperature or pressure or, uh, or any applicable data and that would be really nice to, uh, to have that data come right to your smart device or in an email or wherever how you uh, chose to, to display your messages. So uh, let's move on. Go ahead and close this out. I did want to go back and uh, and go over one thing. We'll go back to our uh, alarm log. Uh, under the message tab, there's an acknowledge value that you can place in here for each alarm or different. Uh, different categories of alarms. Uh, so in other words, when you when you acknowledge an alarm, this value for the applicable alarm will be placed in the acknowledge register. So there are a couple other ways to uh, display alarms other than an alarm bar. Uh, we can do an alarm display and uh, here is our acknowledge address. I'll just leave this at LW200. Uh, under here, much the same way as the alarm bar, you can you can define uh, what shows up in in each display. Now, the uh, the alarm display will only show the current the current alarms. <clears throat> for the selected categories. So we're going to leave this at all of them for now. And of course you can change uh, your background colors. Uh, you can have a different color when it's acknowledged. I'll make it green uh, after it's acknowledged. Uh, we've got our, our grid color. We can change it or we can just make it uh, invisible. Uh, we can have them ascending or descending and of course we can change our time and date formats. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click OK. We'll put this one here and I'm going to put a numeric display to display our, uh, our acknowledge value. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, run an offline simulation. Activate our alarm, and you can see it. It displays our active alarm right here. The alarm is off; it disappears. So only the uh, presently active alarms will show here. Uh, you can acknowledge the alarm, and you see it puts that value there. And uh, that value, of course, will stay there until. Uh, till it's overwritten. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and move on. Uh, we also have a uh, an event display. Now what that does, that's kind of a, uh, a history. It'll show you the the uh, let me change that acknowledge address. It will show you uh, your past. Uh, Alarms, and uh, we can uh, we can put some more stuff in here. We can display the uh, time that that uh, that it went back to normal. And about ten characters. The time. Uh, we can do a sequence number. so on and so forth. Of course we can change the, uh, the order that they display in. So we ahead and click OK. Place this one here. Go ahead and make it a little bigger. Alright, uh, 
also go ahead and do an oh let me put a uh, so here display our acknowledge values go ahead and simulate this so we'll create an alarm condition and uh, as you can see after it recovers the color turns back to green uh, but it did store it with the time and the date and so on and so forth. Trigger another one, so on and so forth. And uh, when this category ever gets acknowledged, it will place a one there. So on and so forth. So, uh, pretty relatively simple easy operation so uh, let's move on to uh, uh, go into a little more depth on our on our push messaging uh, if you're at all familiar with easy access 2.0 uh, this would be awful handy to you um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a systems tag And it's down in miscellaneous, and uh, and it's our uh, push notification alarm status uh, tag, and uh, we can place a value in this register, and it will actually give us a uh, a status color on our on our uh, uh, Easy Access 2.0 app, and I'll. I'll I've got some images I'll show you what that looks like but uh, so we can go ahead and, and place this uh, somewhere in our application we can use a uh, a macro or a PLC control or whatever to place a, a value in here based on condition so uh, as you can see um, uh, zero is no color, uh, one would be green, two uh, would be yellow, and three would be red. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the Easy Access 2.0 desktop application. And as you can see here, uh, we have, when our, we've got a value of zero here, there's, uh, there's no indicator. And you can see here as we go to uh, one, we get a green. Go to two, we get a yellow. And go to three, we get a red. Pretty cool stuff. Well, that's our alarm functions. Thank you for watching, and be sure to come back and watch more of our instructional videos.